Spirits, once the legacy tour is over, can I have the Spitfire? Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Yeah, I'm keep, I'm, it's going to be blown up in my back garden, mate. Shh, no, no, no. Um, uh, any news about your new album? What, you mean the new Maiden album? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, not yet. Give it, yeah, not yet. That's going to be fucking, what, uh, that was social media. I'm pretty sure you made the album's coming. No, no. First, before we do anything like that, you know, but uh, no, the, I, I'm it's only been 14 years since the last solo album, right? 14 years, incredible. Uh, so, problem is, when when I did the last chunk of writing for the solo album, and that was before the Book of Souls tour, obviously, so that was you know, uh, 2015, 20, 2014 or something. Then 2015, we made the album. In 2016, I had throat cancer. And in 2017, we played catch up to all the shit that we hadn't had the chance to do before. And then 2018, 19, um, this stupid ass pandemic decided to fuck everybody up. And um, there was nothing we could do then, so it's, you know, the idea was that the, the solo album should have been done like uh, four or five years ago, but it wasn't for obvious reasons. So now we're revisiting it, I get done with these spoken word shows, I'm going back to LA and we are working on it uh, for three weeks and then I could be w working with Maiden and Roy is going to be working with the instrumental parts of it. So eventually, uh, hopefully this year or early next year, we should have it finished. When it's going to go out, that's another question. <laughs> what made you take the decision to quit, Maiden, in uh, 1993? Uh, wow, nearly 20 years ago. Shit. Yeah, there you go. How time flies and having fun. So, um, well. Uh, honestly, I was as surprised as anybody else. And I don't think people really be believed that at the time, because it was hard for people to take it, you know. But, you know, you just, you have to have a change around in your life sometimes. And um, I just thought that if I stayed with Maiden forever, all I would learn about was what it was like within Maiden. And in order to learn what it was like outside Maiden, you have to leave, because unless you left, nobody would take anything that you did seriously. It would always be like, uh, oh, bless him, he's doing a solo record. It's not very important, really. Let him have his fun, and then we can go back to being an Iron Maiden. I hated that, right? So I thought, well, no, fuck it, I'll just leave. And uh, people said, well, what happens if your career doesn't work out? I said, well, that's, that's, that's God or fate saying maybe that's the best. Better, better that you know that now and do something else with your life than sit there in some weird fantasy world and, um, and, and end up just grumpy at the end. Um, is, is there a thematic reason that the chorus of uh, the chemical wedding um, is repeated in the song, The Alchemist. Uh, yes, there is. Because they're related, because The Chemical Wedding is actually about the alchemical wedding. So the whole thing is all one. And the reason The Chemical Wedding, the, the, the original chem, The Chemical Wedding, the story is The Chemical Wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz. And that was a sort of a legend about this guy, Christian Rosenkreutz, who legend, uh, allegedly was like a, um, an occult, sort of like adept in the 15th, 16th century, 17th century, whatever. So they had this order called the Rosicrucians, but basically it was all to do with alchemy and mysticism. And the idea was that William Blake used a lot of the imagery um, in his poetry and his imagery. So it was an attempt to connect 
all those things together. So the chemical wedding at the beginning, which is sort of an allegory, allegory of, of life, of birth and death, and also relationships, because there's a guy walking around and he's being followed by, by, his, by a shadow that's different to him, you know, basically. But the idea is that they're, they, they're, leading, they're being led somewhere into another world. And at the end of the album, um, we, bring, we bring it back, you know, uh, with the, the alchemists, with the, um, uh, I, I actually can't remember if I sing it, but I know that the, the, the melody is there. At the end, it's just uh, done melodically, but not, uh, not vocally at the end. Um, what was your inspiration for Empire of the Clouds? Would you ever play it live? Well, Empire of the Clouds was something that I built the airship, the R101, when I was probably six or seven years old from a kit, one of those plastic kits, right? Maybe I was a bit older than me. No, I was pretty, I was pretty young when I built it. And there, there was a, the kit, we had the mast and everything and, um, and everything else. In actual fact, the R101's sister ship, don't know if you know this, uh, the R100 uh, flew to Canada and back successfully and spent a whole week touring around Canada uh, and had a mast built for it, for the, the empire of the clouds going around at Saint Bell down the road. Oh. So, uh, a bit of trivia for you. So, uh, um, so, any chance for a 5.1 mix of your solo works around sound? Strangely enough, um, we were talking about not so much remixing the old stuff, but it's not a bad idea, but we were thinking of mixing this new record regular mix but also doing a special mix for kind of like video gaming type stuff for all the um, environment that people like to do there so we've got a guy uh, teed up for doing that uh, which should be kind of cool. <laughs> 